This first supplementary cementitious material we're going to look at, and is actually the most abundant on the planet, is fly ash. So this is a byproduct of the combustion of pulverized coal in electric, electrical power plants. So there are some benefits to this in placement of the concrete, and that is there is reduced slump loss, reduced bleed water, and enhanced workability. When it's hardened, there's an increased long-term strength. So over time, if you specify to say a 90-day strength, it actually will be better than Portland cement. Reduced permeability and increased durability. So that makes it more suitable for harsher climates or maybe infrastructure projects or anything below ground like that or sewerage systems or anything that is subject to some kind of chemical attack. Some of the negatives, however, with fly ash is there is slower strength gain. So um, if one of you got a composite slab and you need an early strength gain, then fly ash might not be the best material to use. And it's also said to be toxic. So there's some arsenic, chromium, lead, titanium, and other heavy metals in this. So where can you apply fly ash, or where is it most suitable on the project? It's probably where the low early strength is not so critical. So if you look at shear walls, for example, they're not going to be loaded early. Foundation elements, because as you construct the building, there's not going to be load toward the end of the construction program. Or anything that is not subject to high load in the first few months, you can start using a high proportion of fly ash. The next material we're looking at is slag cement, also known as ground granulated blast furnace slag, and this is a product of the steel industry. So this is a hydraulic cement formed during the liquefaction of iron in the blast furnace. The molten slag, which comes out, is then rapidly cooled and it forms a glassy non-metallic granules. So when hardened, there's an increased long-term compressive and flexural strength over time in the, in the longer term. There's also increased reflectivity, so with a wider colour, and this reduces the heat island effects. And also, again, increased durability. However, some of the negatives... You might have the slower strength gain, so the early strength will be low, but, you know, as I said, it will be higher in the long term. And also, the use and availability of slag is much less than the fly ash market. And when you can use this, again, it's where the low early strength isn't critical. So, shear walls, foundation elements, or anything that is, you know, not going to be loaded so much in the first few months. The next material we're going to look at is silica fume, which is quite different to the first two. And this is a byproduct of the electric arc furnace in the production of silicon. And this can replace, or is typically replaced cement by 5 to 7%. So when hardened, there is a high early age strength. So due to the, the, the uh, nature of fly ash, this blends pretty well with fly ash, so then you can actually get the high early strength for the, for the concrete. However, some of the negatives is this material is very high in demand and expensive, unlike fly ash and, sil and uh, slag. With this is an increased water demand in the concrete, and you need super plasticizers to increase the workability of this type of uh, concrete. Next is aggregates, what we're going to look at. So this is a broad category of coarse, medium grain particle material. So this mixes with cement and the water, um, and it includes sand, gravel, crushed stone, slag, and recycled concrete. And it comes down to fine aggregate, which is obviously the finer particles, and coarse aggregate, like in this photo, which is more bigger particles that um, blends with the cement and the water. So what we're going to look at is the opportunity for recycled aggregate. So this is when you can use recycled concrete or crushed waste concrete, and this can be a feasible uh, aggregate. But with this, you're going to have higher creep, so this means the long-term deflection over time. It's going to move more, and this is one of the big criteria for design engineers. And for some elements where deflection governs, then this might not be the best to use. And the recycled fines reduce the workability. So with that, you're, meant to, you're better off using recycled aggregate only for the coarse aggregate only.